In this video, we are going to see how to handle libraries in Azure Databricks. This is a very important interview question. We all know that Azure Databricks is really popular for two things. One is data transformation and the other one is performing machine learning or data science work. These two are the main reason why Databricks is really a popular tool. So when you're using Databricks to perform any kinds of data transformation work or the data science work, you'll be using a lot of inbuilt Python libraries for your development, right? But in some cases, there would be a need for using any external libraries for your work based on the different scenarios. So it is very important for us to understand how to install and manage these external libraries in say Databricks workspace. So in this video, we'll be seeing about all the information that you needed to know about the libraries and also discuss about the different interview questions that you might be asked in your interview and discuss how we can answer these questions better. Cool, now let's get started. Okay, as you can see here, I'm inside the Databricks workspace. Here I have already created a cluster, which is the standard compute. Firstly, let's attach the compute with this notebook. After attaching, I'm going to write a simple print statement to see if the cluster works fine or not. Cool, it's working fine without any issues. Okay, now an interesting thing to note here is, this standard compute that I have created already comes with some of the inbuilt Python libraries that we can use straight away. To see what are those inbuilt libraries, in the right side section of the notebook, you can click on the last option, which is called as Python libraries. After clicking this, here we can see all the inbuilt Python libraries that are supported for this standard compute. We can use any of these libraries in our code straight away. For example, let me search for NumPy over here in the text box. As you can see here, this is an inbuilt one which we can use it in our code. For example, let me type import NumPy as np and execute this code. As you can see, we have successfully imported this library without any issues. Now we can use this library to perform the operation that we needed to do. For example, I'm pasting a code here. So in this code, we are creating an array using the NumPy library. Let's run the cell now. Cool, as you can see here, we have created the NumPy array in our code. Similarly, you can use all the libraries that comes inbuilt with this cluster. Okay, now let's talk about the external libraries. As discussed earlier, there can be some scenarios where you needed to use any kinds of external libraries for your work. In that case, let's see how we can use the external libraries. So for that, in the search box, I'm going to type a library name called FastText. As you can see here, this particular library does not come inbuilt with the standard compute cluster and therefore we cannot use this library in the code. Say for example, let me try to import this library in the code as import fast text and execute the cell. As you can see here, we are getting an error saying no module named fast text. The reason for this is, this particular library is an external library which does not come inbuilt with the standard compute. Here in another tab, I have opened the official PyPy documentation of the FastText library. If I scroll down here, you can find information about this library, which is related to machine learning, mainly used to perform text analytics. Say for example, if you want to perform any kinds of text analytics in your code and want to use this FastText library, then you may need to install this external library in your Databricks workspace. So let's see how we can do that. There are two ways that we can do this in Databricks. This is a very important interview question. The two types are, the first one is called as notebook scope libraries, and the second one is called as cluster scope libraries. Firstly, let's see the notebook scope libraries. So consider if you want to use any external library for only this notebook, and you don't want to use it in any other notebook, then you can install the library in the notebook itself, and this is called as notebook scope libraries. So let's see how we can install it. So for that, I'm going to create a new cell over here. Now to install this, we need to type a code that we usually use to install the Python packages. The code would be percentage pip install, and then we need to give the library name, which is fast text in this case. 
Now the most important thing to note here is the notebook scope library is also applicable only for the current session. So what this means is even after installing this library in this notebook, when we restart the cluster, we cannot use the library unless and until we install the same library using the same code again. So in this case, for using the notebook scope libraries, this code should always be here in the notebook. Another important thing to note here is, if you straight away run this code, what will happen is, by default, the latest version of this Fostext library will get installed. So it is not a good practice to install a library like this. Instead, we need to specify the version number while installing the library. The reason for this is, if you don't specify the version number, and in the future, if the latest version is released for the same library, then the latest version will be installed and there can be a situation where your old code might fail. So if you specify the version number with it, then every time when you run this notebook, the same version will get installed and the code should work absolutely fine. So these two things are important to understand since you might get these questions in your interview. So to install with the version number, let's first go to the documentation and here you can find the version of this package which is 0.9.2 and as you can see here, this is the latest version. So let's copy the version number and jump back to the notebook and here in the code, I will type double equals and paste the version number over here. Okay, so this is the complete code. Let's run this cell to install the fast text library. Cool, as you can see here, the package has been installed successfully. Now, if I run this code, we'll be able to import the library successfully without any issues. So this is the first way, which is called as notebook scope library. So as said earlier, this is installed only for this session. So what I mean by this is, if I go to the cluster and click on this detach and reattach option, what will happen is the session for this cluster will restart. Let's click on this confirm button over here. After that, if you run this code, you'll get the same error again. The reason for this is, as said earlier, the notebook scope library is only applicable for the current session. Therefore, this code should always stay in the notebook and it should be run every time to use this library in our code. So this is called as notebook scope library. Okay, now let's see about the next one, which is cluster scope libraries. So for that, I'm going to another tab here, you can see the standard compute that I have created earlier. So to set up the cluster scope libraries, firstly, we need to click on the cluster. Here, you can see all the configurations of the clusters. In this, there will be a tab called libraries. So let's click on it. So this is the place where we'll be installing any external libraries. So for that, in the right side, there will be a button called install new. So let's click on it. After clicking it, here you'll have a different options to select the source of the libraries. For example, firstly we have a workspace option. So consider if you have any package file in the workspace location, you can select it using this option to install it. Similarly, we have different sources such as file path of the ADLS, which is the Azure Data Lake storage. Then we have PyPy, Maven, CRAN, and DBFS. So these are the different data sources supported in Azure Databricks to install any external libraries to the compute. Among these options, we are going to use the PyPy to install the libraries. As you can see here, this is how we need to specify the syntax to install the libraries, which is the library name followed by the version number as per the best practice that we discussed earlier. So to test this, let's install the same fast text library. So for that, I'll copy the same syntax that we already have in our notebook and paste it in the package section. So by doing this, we are installing the Fastex library in the cluster itself. So once you install it in the cluster, you can use this library in any notebook as long as you are using the same cluster in the notebook. So basically it is like installing in a higher level compared to the notebook scoped one. Also, unlike notebook scope cluster, it is not only applicable for the current session, which means that we don't have to install this library again, and we have to do it only once. And once we have installed it, 
Every time when you start or restart the cluster, this library will automatically get installed and can be ready to be used in any notebooks. Ok, now let's go ahead and install it. Cool, as you can see here, the fastx library is getting installed to this standard compute cluster. Nice, we have successfully installed the library. Now what we can do is, before using this library in the code, we need to first restart the cluster. This will allow the cluster to make the library ready for us to use it in our notebooks. Cool, in the meantime, what we can do is, we can create a new notebook so that we can test importing the library in both the existing notebook and the new notebook. So for that, I'm going to duplicate this tab and go to the workspace location and create a new notebook. After creating it, let's type the same code to import the fast text library. Before running the code, we need to wait for the cluster to restart again. So let's go to the compute page to monitor the cluster status. Nice, as you can see here, the cluster is active. Now let's go to the new notebook and run this code cell. Cool, as you can see here, we can successfully import this library in the new notebook. Similarly, let's go to our existing notebook and run the code below. Cool, so this runs fine as well. Also, if you note something here, now in the Python library section, you can find the fast text library in here. So basically, we have installed this library in the standard compute cluster, which means that this fast text library is now added along with the other built-in libraries of this cluster. So this way of installing libraries is called as cluster scope libraries. Ok, we have seen the differences between the notebook scope libraries and the cluster scope libraries. Now the most important thing is, we need to understand when to go for what. The best and the short answer for this would be, we need to use the notebook scope libraries only for the development purpose. Whereas we should go for the cluster scope libraries when you want your code to be pushed to the production environment. Now let's understand why. When you use the notebook scope libraries, there can be an instance where the library is not consistent across different notebooks. Say for example, a data engineer can install a library with a specific version in a notebook and another data engineer can install the same library with completely a different version in another notebook. So these kinds of inconsistencies can cause huge problems when your code is pushed to the prod environment. So the main key for the prod environment is the consistency. And for that, the best approach would be using the cluster scope libraries. So therefore, if you're developing something in the dev environment, then you can use notebook scope libraries to do all your work since it is quite fast compared to installing the libraries to the cluster itself. And once your development is completed, then you can install the library directly in the cluster with the same version that you use for the development. So in this case, when your code is pushed to the prod environment, the same library can be installed in the prod cluster, often by an automated templates such as Terraform or Biceps as an infrastructure as a code deployment. This will ensure the prod environment is consistent with the different external libraries and its versions. Also, more than anything, the most important point to note here is, it is always a good practice to avoid using the external libraries at all. The good practice is to use only the inbuilt libraries that comes with the cluster to do any operation. The reason for this is, we all know that the Databricks uses different partitioning and other techniques to optimize the code that we write. So this optimization works really well with the libraries that comes inbuilt with the cluster itself compared with any external libraries that we install. So the best practice is to develop your code with the libraries that comes inbuilt with your cluster. Also one final thing to note here is, when you take this particular example, which is installing the fast text library, it also comes inbuilt with the ML compute in Azure Databricks. So what I mean by this is, let me go to the cluster details page. And if I create a ML compute instead of the standard compute in Azure Databricks, you will get a few additional libraries, including fast text, which are related to performing machine learning work. So in this case, the best practice is, instead of installing the fast text as an external library, you can create the machine learning compute in Azure Databricks and use the fast text library that comes as an inbuilt one with the ML compute. 
So by this way, it will be well optimized and very easy to manage as well. Cool. So now I hope you have a full understanding about libraries in Azure Databricks. So if you found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe and see you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.